How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and if you didn't realize, Android 10 has just dropped from Google. So we're gonna talk about what I think are the 10 biggest features in Android 10. There's several really good ones. Now, if you have a Pixel phone, this should be available immediately as an over-the-air update if you check for it. If you have another manufacturer, this might take a few weeks to potentially even a few months, but still we can go over these features and you can get excited about them. And keep in mind, these are not gonna be in any particular order, so let's get started. So first up, we have one that a lot of people have been waiting for, which is dark mode. You can now enable that in the settings. This is one that a lot of people simply prefer but also if you want to get potentially better battery life than having dark mode on and having those pixels off with an OLED screen especially then this might preserve your battery significantly longer depending on how you're using the phone so you have a couple advantages with it now next up is native support for folding phones I know a lot of people do not have folding phones I personally think they're kind of a gimmick at this point but maybe in the future when they get a lot thinner who knows and at least Android will be ready when they potentially do become more mainstream. We'll have to see. But if you do have a phone that's folding already, maybe it'll work better. Next up, we have a new feature for privacy control, specifically how apps can use location data. So similar to how iOS works, you'll now have a new pop-up anytime or the first time an app requests a location uh, data, and it'll give you the option to either always allow the app to use the location data only allow it to use it when the app is running so it won't run in the background or you can just deny it. So if you're really privacy conscious or you wanna save that battery life, you don't want something checking location data in the background all the time, you now have a lot more control over that. The next feature is focus mode and this is something different than do not disturb. So do not disturb mode just kinda of mutes all notifications whereas focus mode allows you to specifically customize whether you want some apps to be able to show notifications and other apps not to be able to so you can focus on a certain task so maybe if you want to have it like your focus mode like work mode then you'll only get notifications from work related apps like your email or something like that we then have a new feature called family link which basically improves parental controls and allows parents to control how much screen time their child or whoever will have in not just the whole phone itself but like individual apps and if they want to they can grant bonus time so like if they finish their homework then they can have bonus time for the day or something like that so you have a lot more control over that and you can also limit the individual apps so you don't want them on Instagram all the time or you don't want them watching too many YouTube videos whatever you have a lot more control over it all right next up we have a pretty cool one for customizing the look of Android and that is new theming options so you can do things like customize the accent color or the font and the icon shapes of stuff and so for example if you look at this and you want to choose the color that'll change things like the brightness bar color the active toggles in settings menus or also the quick settings menu icons that sort of thing you can change the color of all that and I know this setting is at least available in the developer options so it's a little bit hidden away so it might not be completely fleshed out it might not work 100% everywhere but at least the feature is there if you want to change it around and customize your Android look a little bit more all right up next we have a new accessibility feature called live captioning which basically allows the system to transcribe any audio throughout the system so it's not like if you're just watching a YouTube video and you use that captioning now no matter what video you're playing whether it's in a recorded video yourself or on Instagram or on YouTube you can now go into the accessibility options enable this feature and then tap the accessibility icon when you want to activate it and it will start transcribing the audio from the system and just write it out what it thinks is going on so this might be good for people who are hard of hearing they're deaf or even people who might be in a meeting or something and they want to watch a video or they and they don't want other people knowing that they're trying to watch a video you're just in a quiet environment and you don't want to disturb people around you that sort of thing and you might not have headphones with you so I think this could be a pretty useful feature not just from an accessibility standpoint but from just usefulness in general all right we got a few more so the next feature is called smart reply but it's not just for replying to things but really suggesting certain actions based on like incoming text messages so say you get a text message that includes an address in it it'll give you a few options like either replying with a thumbs up emoji or whatever or it'll give you the option to open that 
in Google Maps. So you see the address coming through, you're expecting it. You don't have to go into the text message app and copy it and then go and paste it into Google Maps. It'll automatically suggest that action and then you can go right to it. So that could be pretty useful depending on the different actions it's capable of. All right, moving on, we have another feature called Sound Amplifier, which I believe is another technically accessibility feature. But basically the idea is you plug in headphones and it will amplify the area around you kind of like hearing aids, I guess, but it also can do noise reduction. So if you're wearing headphones and you use this noise filter ability as part of this feature, then potentially it would act like noise cancellation even if you don't have noise cancellation headphones. So it's kind of like a double feature here, either just purely amplifying the stuff around you if you can't hear stuff, or filtering out the noise around you. So it kind of does both. It's a cool feature, not sure how many people are gonna really use this, but maybe you wanna check it out, at least now you know about it. All right, finally in Android 10, we have some new gesture navigation features. So kind of like with iOS, you can now use your thumb to gesture around to navigate through Android, whether you're going back in an app or changing apps. So specifically, if you want to switch apps and bring up the app switcher real quick, you can swipe up and over, and that'll bring up the app switcher or just go back to the previous app. If you swipe from the left side, that'll go back within the app. And you can also swipe up to go home like you might in iOS, if you're familiar with that. So these are pretty useful. I personally do mostly use an iPhone and I'm really used to using that. So it is a convenient way to switch between apps. It's something you completely get used to. You don't even have to think about it. So it definitely is nice. So those are just 10 really cool Android features that we just got in Android 10. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I recommend is a video I made talking about Android features that iPhone does not have. So that should be pretty interesting, especially if you're an iPhone user or an Android user alike. If you wanna watch that video, I'll just have a little thing right here. You can just click on that. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.